OK, let's try the cubic equation here, where we're going to do a bunch of uh, work with it. The first thing we're going to do is define, determine the coordinates of the stationary points. Well, look at this, Mr. Audrey. It's nice to put it in the two forms. So if we want to find stationary points or turning points, we have to take the derivative and make it equal 0. And just knowing that, you might get a point. Um, sorry, that was the top one. We're looking at this question here. So we take the derivative. 3 times x, bring it down with 3x squared, minus 2 times minus 10x plus 7. There's the derivative. And now we make it equal 0. And now we factor it. Or we could use a quadratic formula, but this one's a pretty easy one to factor. 3x times x to get 3x squared minus 7x minus 3x. That's minus 10x. And minus three, 7 times minus 1 is plus 7. Well, there's the two x values that are going to give us the coordinates of the stationary point. So we go 7 over 3. Uh, that's going to make this 0, and 1's going to make this 0. Now, we're going to have to take these values and put them back into the original equation. And if we do that, if we put 7 over 3 in here for x, or even in here for x in our calculators, we're going to get minus 32 over 27. And we know that if we put 1 in, we're going to get 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that gives us the coordinates Oh, there I showed. I did it my calculator, and I think I did it right. It looks like I put in 7 over 3 into this one, and I've got the answer of minus 32 over 27. And if I put 1 in, I get 0. So there are the coordinates of the stationary points. Maybe we have time to take a look here at sketching it. So we're going to sketch this thing here now. We've got x-intercepts of 1 and 3 right there like that. We know it's the shape of it's got to be like this. And we know because it's x minus 1 squared, it's got to turn on 1. And we know it turns on 7 over 3, which is a little bit more than 2. And negative 1 right around here, that's where it turns. And then it goes straight up through 3, the x-intercept. And what's the y-intercept? If we let x equal 0, we can see that y is minus 3. Well, that's the whole thing. Pretty well done. It said find the point of inflection, too, though. So we could, you know, there's a way to do this. We could add 1 and 7 th over 3 and divide by 2 and get the x value. Or we could divide. We could find the second derivative and make it equal 0. That will give us the point of inflection. So we do that. We go take the derivative of the derivative, which will be, make this 6x minus 10, because we, we had minus 10x. And then we add 10, divide by 6. We get x is 5 over 3. Take that 5 over 3, put it back into the original equation, and you're going to get the y-coordinate of the point of inflection. Whoops. And it sits right there. 5 over 3 and minus right in the middle here, right, right at that point right there. Well, there's the whole thing sketched and done. 3.1 and 3.2.